think I've only heard this story maybe the first time you ever told it, but can you tell us? We want to like delve into the history, like when Dirty Dancing first came out and Mike and Lake Lord. Now, weren't you at the premiere party or something for that? Tell us about that time. Well, um, the answer is yes. Um, a guy named John Moses, who you met, really was the one that, that it's his promotion of the idea to get the movie people to stay at his Lake Road Inn, which he was young right here. And but at the same time, he was doing a thing called Swing Fest, playing big band music for the crowds at the end. And then, once the Dirty Dancing thing started, he realized that this music, the Dirty, the dirty Dancing, was more what I did with my radio show. So he got wind of who I was, called me. He said, let's do something close to Swing Fest. So we did a, a beach type film. In the meantime, the movie was in, in the process of coming out. And, but, but at the time, we thought it was just going to be this B movie. Um, just, we just didn't think there was, there was much to it from the standpoint of how big it would ever be. And part of the reason was that, that the movie producers, nor the record company people, promoted this at all. It just happened. So, because of this child of not doing things with John, he asked me to play for the, the movie premiere was held at the theater in Henderson. So he asked that, that I play at the after party in the lobby of the Lake Louisiana. And that's when I realized, until then, I didn't know what songs were on that soundtrack. And boy, when I started playing those songs, I said, wow, I mean, this is... I said, God, this is enough to get the movie going, not knowing how strong the Patrick Swayze and one of the great relationship thing would take off. And, and even I like the movie I saw it, still, because of the lack of attention, I never thought it would be that big. And I'll never forget about, about a month or two after it came out, the general release, um, there's an article in the paper that says, so there's, there's, a, there's a buzz happening around a movie that nobody knows anything about. It's called Dirty Dance. I'll never forget this. And then suddenly, it's everywhere. I mean, it's it's all over the news and, and uh, God, it's, it's getting record record making in tennis places. And, you know, it's supposed to play for two weeks at certain theaters and they hold it over for another five weeks. And it's just wild and crazy. And, uh, and then suddenly, John said, you know, that's what's happening. Let's continue the momentum. See, he owned also, as you know, property and the building where the dancing scenes were held and, and the cabins and all that kind of stuff. So what we did, we created a dirty dancing weekend, every weekend. And we would bring in big name hacks of this kind of music. Give us some of those names. Oh my God, the flattery, the, the, uh, the clothes, the uh, flamingos, D. Clark, Marv Johnson, uh, Fidel Vikings, um, and Maurice Wiggins from the Zodiacs, who had the hit stay on the sound drive. You see, and we, we packed it up. Every weekend, boy, we just, it was just packed. And, it just, and then we had some dancers that did like the people here and danced to the song. And they got so popular, they then took, took it on the road. It was a group called the, the Golden Sounds of Motor out of Marion, North Carolina. And the guy was a pretty good promoter, so he came with the idea of combining his Motown show with Dirty Dancing. And they took it, they toured the Southeast and brought the dancers along with them. And it, was, it was unbelievable. And it really never lost its momentum, but what happened was John moved to Florida, and then the main building burned. And of course, John moved number one stop, but it may have continued had the building burned even without him being there. The circumstances didn't, didn't make it. So, yeah, I saw firsthand uh, what a phenomenal it was. And as you know, like we talked about a couple days ago, but um, there was a thing on the internet about two, three months ago that said that Dirty Nancy was the most popular film out there among women. Gone with, the, gone with the Wind used to be, but that crowd is aging out. So this place, this movie's taking the place of Gone with the Wind is the most popular movie. It's amazing, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. And what about Billy Scott? Now, he was part of those days. Did he get Billy was. Where, where, he, where he was involved was with that touring group. Plus, he played here as well. Uh, but 
they had Billy kind of as, um, as a star in that Motown, Motown Dirty Dancing Dream. It was a, it was a ball. I mean, it really was. And I said, I am seeing a lot of them. I didn't see all of them again. But a few on the road. Well. And also, they were tired of Maurice Williams. It was over. And so the tour went well. How many people were born? Well, certainly, how many people were born? The building was packed. Yeah. So I'm going to guess that it would have to be 500,000 people at least. I think others came along just to tour the premises. It was a great boom. And, and you know, the first thing that happened was people here, I'm not knocking them here, they just tip them anyway. I'm not sure they ever really realized just what a jewel they had. You know I mean, most of them got their other jobs and this and that. And, don't think about promotion. Is it? But it, it really was. It, it's it's probably the best thing that's ever happened in this town. What, what year was the last movie show? Well, the movies were released in 87. I would say probably 90, 99. So it took from 1990 to 91 to 2009 before everything else. But Pretty didn't much you so. do a 20th anniversary? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we had a couple of saloon in North Carolina. Place called the Saluda Mountain Jam. Again, we brought in Lewis Bishop and Billy Scott. Yes. Plus, we brought the dancers to the tour. Did you write that? No, she was supposed to, but it got some, some kind of miscommunication. Some kind of miscommunication. Now, Eleanor came, you know, for some other things. In fact, in my book, she's got, I've got a picture of Eleanor giving Maurice Williams a platinum. For the sale. Do you know that album? Last time I heard it sold over 20. I mean, think about it. Well, it's, it's probably the back and forth. between Greece and Greece. It's supposed to be back and forth between Greece and Greece. Well, that's great, Jack. Now, that's. 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 In the United States in 1960. And he made fairly good money. He sold over a million copies. All right, when he got that album, he sold 20. He was on a 12 song, sold roughly 20 million copies. So you can see, it, 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 he's sitting right pretty much. Just because, because of, of one movie. Then, then, then it was the second issue because they didn't get all the songs in the first album. Right. And it turned out to like 12 to 15 I'm not the expert, but I'm pretty sure it's true. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's one of the most amazing things that, 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 you'll, ever, that you'll ever know. And, and yet, a lot of people just don't know. Well, you do, of course. I've studied it enough at this point. And you know something? You'd be surprised at the number of people especially women, that have seen the movie 20, 30, 40 times. And these are grown women. These are not kids. We, we had you know, the guys from a place called Music Factory in Charlotte. And uh, we told him that. He said, I just don't believe it. You think he's dead? I said, no. It's a true fact. And then his girlfriend came and joined us a little later that evening. I said, all right, let's, out of curiosity, I said, I think your girlfriend, she ever saw the movie. So I said, you ever heard the movie, Dirty Dancing? She said, have I? I've seen it probably 30 times. <laughs> so, but that's, that's the way it is. It's pretty cool. Well, in our research, we found that the average woman has seen it. setting and the time, you know, like an open thing, before the Beatles and that. It was that time right after the Beatles happened, the whole world changed. I'm not talking about the Beatles, it's just 
to change that. And, and that innocence and that kind of fun is like, like the dirty dance was kind of the last gasp of that, of that lifestyle. And then when you add to it, the sound, who ever picked out the music? The genius. And the soundtrack was so amazing. It was a combination of all that together.